Hello, uh, I'm Scott Stevens, Goldsboro City Manager. Uh, thank you for spending a few minutes with me today. Uh, it's hard to believe it's December already. Uh, we've moved from the office, as you can tell, uh, into a setting into our recently reopened Center Street or Streetscape project downtown. We're here for a few reasons. Uh, first, it's hard not to want to be outside when it's 70 degrees and sunny in December, and it really is nice out. Secondly, for those that have not had an opportunity to get a glimpse of our uh, recently completed streetscape project, uh, we thought we'd provide this opportunity uh, to at least bring you outside, let you see some of it, and also see how we've decorated for the holiday season. It's pretty during the day. Uh, it's more, uh, I guess, enticing at night. So I would encourage you to visit it day and night. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about our employees. Uh, we have a great group of people. We really are here to serve you. I see that day in and day out by what our employees are doing. And we spend a lot of effort with talking about our time and resources on customer service training. We want your experience to, uh, with us to be pleasant. We can't always say yes to what you're asking of us, but we can always be pleasant and do it in a professional manner, and we're putting time and effort to get us there. The first thing we did in October, other than talking about this for some period of time, was put 360 of our 440 employees from all departments through two hours of, of customer service training. I think that went over very well and the information presented there was right on. In addition, I had over 80 supervisors, department heads, my administrative support staff, those that are on the phones or talking with the public almost every day, hear from Jimmy Ford, a local motivational speaker who really talked about attitude and approach and just spent a few minutes with them, but again, trying to drive that point home of, of how service to the community really is important. And finally, we have over 40 of our employees in a number of positions that work with the public having intensive customer service training over a three-month period where they'll spend some time in December, some time in January, February, and then some time in March and April having a more focused approach to customer service. My goal and the Mayor and Council's goal is to continue to make sure that your experience with us is pleasant and professional, and if it's not, please let me know. We really do have a committed group. Uh, we all can have good days and bad days, but we want to make sure that your interaction with us is good. So please, if it's not, let me know. We recently held our lights up downtown. What a nice event. If you weren't here this year, I hope you'll make plans to attend next year. We had a great crowd. We rededicated the downtown uh, street that we had just opened the Center Street project, and it was a huge success. We had trolley rides, and I don't know how late into the night those went, but they were lined up to get on the trolley rides, which will continue through the month of December. Every Tuesday night uh, and Tuesday evening, we'll have the trolley rides. So please, if you missed them or you haven't done it, come downtown. It's really a something to enjoy, and I think you uh, would be encouraged and be excited to be here. A couple of things that have occurred in our council meetings recently. There's been a lot of debate over the last few months about our mayor pro tem, or really more so in August. The council asks that we bring it back in December. And at our recent meeting, our first meeting in December, the council did select Councilman Michael Hedden to be our mayor pro tem for the year 2013. So we say thank you to Councilmember Chuck Allen, who has served in the mayor pro tem's role for a number of years. We look forward to working with Councilmember Michael Hedden in that role. And I think all of our mayor and council look forward to doing their best at serving the community. So anytime you have questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to contact them or us, and we'll try to get your questions and answers, uh, uh, answers to your questions. In addition, you're going to hear about ethics training for our mayor or elected officials over the month of December. It is scheduled. They're doing it a date in December. Nothing wrong or nothing has occurred other than it is a state requirement that every four years or following our election that our local elected officials have two hours of ethics training. So they are going through that. So as you hear that uh, occurring, nothing wrong. It's just required by state law and it's a good refresher for all of us. We had our finance director, Kay Scott. Uh, report to the council some good news regarding the city's fund balance in our general fund and we're finishing our audit and that's why she had this information from July 2011 to June of 2012 our last fiscal year again that was July 2011 to June 2012 we expect to add 1.8 million to our general fund balance or the city savings account uh, adding this there's a lot of reasons why it's increasing uh, our fund balance or savings account but it is good news and we wanted to share it with our elected officials as well as the community so you'll hear more about that as our audit comes out in October or in January in addition a recent item we discussed with council is an offer we had on property that the city owns at John Street and Arrington Bridge Road we own approximately 70 acres mostly in the floodplain 
20 acres we have an offer on at $6,000 per acre, so we will advertise that and go through an upset bid process. So if you say, hey, I wish I had had a chance to buy that property, you do. Uh, the procedure for that will be listed in the paper, but you could certainly call my office and we'd be happy to make sure we work you through that process. Again, we've had an offer on 20 acres, $6,000 per acre, and you'll see that advertisement coming forward uh, sometime in December. I want to talk about violence in the community. Uh, we've had a lot of discussions uh, in the last five or six months about violent acts that occurred, and fortunately over the last several months it's been better, and I hope going forward it is much better. But I want to let you know the police department is continuing to work to reduce the violence in Goldsboro throughout the community. There are a number of different kinds of methods. I guess the first and maybe more, more most visible is our community-oriented policing, of having officers out of their vehicles, walking an area, as well as driving through an area, but also staying within that same zone or area for longer periods of time so they get to know the ebb and flow and what it's supposed to look like and who lives there and how they act. And that gives us a better sense of people that are right or wrong in our neighborhood as well. We have the use of a mobile command center, so as we know of activity occurring in an area or if you see activity occurring, call us. We have a vehicle we can move there and have officers come in and out of that area and that has been very effective over the last several months. And finally, we have the implementation of a more targeted approach towards those most likely to commit violent crime. You should have heard about this new initiative, maybe not the name, but at least that we're doing something different. And what we're calling this is Goldsboro's Partners Against Crime, or GPAC. Goldsboro Partners Against Crime, or GPAC. And I hope that will become a very familiar word to you in the coming months. This really is a partnership between law enforcement, the judicial system, and most importantly, the community. The process is identifying the people most likely to commit violent crimes in your community, calling them into a setting where you have the law enforcement, the DA's office, and the community there to say, we know what you've been doing. We're here to help you stop. We love you and we want you to stop. But if you don't stop, here's what's going to happen. You're not going to get arrested and be charged with something that will take us 18 months or 24 months to move through the judicial system. You'll move to the front of the line. You'll see a judge almost immediately and you'll be sentenced almost immediately. Same on the law enforcement side. We can't track all 30,000 people in Goldsboro, but we can watch 10 or 15 pretty hard. And that's the basis behind this program. We set the bar so that those that are most likely to commit violent acts know that we're watching them, know what the results will be, and then offer them ways to move their life forward in other ways. And it takes the community saying that and helping out, but more and more coming on that. So if you have questions or want to be involved, please don't hesitate to call us and we will work through that. We have a number of active projects and I don't want to, to take time to cover them all. I don't think they would all be of interest because we haven't maybe had activity on some of them, but I at least want to talk about the ones that I'm questioned about the most often. First, I'll start with the Air Force Museum. The Mayor and Council did have a formal presentation by our consultants at their last meeting in November. Um, a fundraising plan is being devised. It's a very expensive project, over $8 million to refurbish the building and equip it with exhibits that would really reflect what we believe needs to happen if we were to move forward, and cost is a significant concern. So the last act of the consultant, the last part of their job, is to finalize their report, and it includes the development of a fundraising plan. I don't think this project is likely to move forward without a significant uh, donation or securing of private funds. So that may mean it's the time's not right for today. But either way, if the funding becomes available and we move forward, we've got great information. If the funding doesn't become available and we choose to delay this project, we still have a lot of good information and it has been a good process. And we want to thank all of those involved from the volunteer committee that served, to our mayor and council, to our staff and consultants that worked through this project. Another thing I'm asked about all the time is street resurfacing. When will our street be resurfaced? Um, and, and we have a lot of streets that need it. Two things I'd like to share with you. First, not all streets within the city limits are city streets. The streets that most of us are driving on, from Berkeley Boulevard to Ash to Spence to most of William Street, most of those streets are maintained by our straight Department of Transportation. Um, so maintenance of those is not under the city council's ability. That is something that is a state responsibility. The other streets, the more neighborhood streets, and, and again a lot of them, are maintained by the city. And we do have a prioritized list of 
the condition of the street, and so we try to go based on condition, share with the mayor and council, and in this year's budget we do have over $600,000 allocated for street resurfacing. That project should go to construction in the early spring, the March time frame, and be finished by July. It will not fix every street that needs to be resurfaced, but again, it will make a dent in those, the needs that is out there, and you ought to see that activity in the spring. I want to talk about recreation a little bit and some of the activity there. Uh, we have a new Parks and Rec Director, I say new, he's been here a year, and Scott Bernard, he and his staff have worked very hard over the past year in developing a recreation master plan, which will be presented very soon to our Mayor and Council. We've had some preliminary uh, discussions with that. But some of the ongoing projects, our Stony Creek Park, we do expect to have the construction of the bathrooms, shelters, improvements to the entranceways, and some paving of the uh, gravel trails that are there. That should begin in December and should be completed in the January, February time frame. We have had hundreds of volunteers throughout the years working that park, donations of property and money to support the efforts there. And we do want to thank all those involved, but I think you'll start to see a few more of the improvements to the Stony Creek Park in the coming months. At the Herman Park Center, we just demolished the old dental office or the Shrum building, and now you have a better view of the Qantas train. Um, I think it's an improvement to the park. We don't have any immediate plans for that area, but it was a building that was in pretty bad disrepair that we just thought it was time to move it out and open up the park a little bit. You should see us throughout the park facilities consolidating playgrounds within each park. So if we have a number of smaller playgrounds, for instance, in Mena Well Park, you should see those combining into one. Part of the reason is to put all of this equipment into one area and to, and to put in engin new engineered wood chips. Have smaller areas so we don't have as many wood chips to place, but the wood chips are required by ADA standards or American with Disabilities Act. They cost around $100,000 to put in place. They'll last for a period of about five years, but they're to make it safer for our children playing in the parks. So if they were to fall from a piece of equipment, they have a more cushioned landing. So again, that is something you should see in all of our parks with playground equipment in the next few months. We've talked about our WA Foster relocation to Mena Well Park. The City Council did make that uh, official. We are working on a request for proposal to hire an engineer, an architectural firm, to assist with the design and cost estimate uh, work for that. Uh, we're pursuing a $500,000 grant to help with the center construction. And again, we expect the cost of this project to be in the one and a half to $2 million range, so grant funding would certainly help with that. But it's an important project, grant funding or not, that I believe will move forward in the coming months. So you'll hear more about that. And we're also replacing our basketball court in Berkeley Park, and that will be occurring in the coming months, but funds are in the current budget to do that. A lot more activity in our parks and recreation, but again, those are some that are going on, and I hope you'll uh, share your thoughts and ideas anytime you see a need within our parks or other facilities. <clears throat> in a recent council meeting, we've also awarded a flow study for our sewer system. Uh, approximately $80,000 has been set aside or awarded to a company called Hydra Structures. They'll be installing flow monitors within our sewer select, uh, collection center, our sanitary sewer collection system. They'll be putting flow monitors into 42 manholes in late December or early January to monitor how the system responds to rainfall. Uh, we have some bond proceeds left over from the, uh, the annexation that occurred uh, that needs to be spent in a good use and we have more than plenty of needs within our sewer collection system. So again, this flow monitoring is the beginning of that, of prioritizing where the most unwanted water, the rainwater or groundwater, gets into our sewer system and will help in directing the almost six million dollars that is available for sewer line and manhole rehabilitation work. So as you see people within our manholes in the coming months, you'll at least have an idea of what we're doing and why we're there. Uh, but again, if you have questions, please call. Our streetscape project, i uh, heard a lot of comments on that over the last month since we opened it in early November. Heard a lot more since we've decorated it for Christmas and turned on the lights uh, recently with our Lights Up event. We appreciate the comments, good or bad. Uh, most of the comments that I have heard have been very positive. Other than the cost of it, people seem to be very pleased with the new look and are very pleased with the lighting up at Christmas time and how it looks at night. Again, we are the mayor and council are discussing whether we continue the next two blocks. Uh, we continue to be asked when we're going. Standing here a few moments ago, we had assistant ask when we're going to do the next two blocks. And the response is the mayor and council at this time are discussing that. If, if we're told to move forward, the earliest I believe we'd be under construction is probably January 2014. We may want to be a few months earlier, but it's a pretty aggressive schedule 
to de engineer it, design it, bid it, and finance it within a 12-month period. Just the process we have to go through takes some time. So January 2014 is a likely time that we would start the next two blocks if the mayor and council want to move forward. But now's the time to share your thoughts on that. So if you're a strong uh, proponent or opponent, it's time to share that. I will tell you just one thing with Goldsburn downtown. I've been here a year now. Uh, I thought the downtown was vibrant and lively. There's always room for improvement, and I, but compared to a lot of towns, we have a nice downtown. That was reaffirmed for me today when I had someone from out of town really unsolicited um, tell me how nice our downtown looked. They had driven through last night. Um, they thought it was beautiful, and I think they're right. Uh, with the decorations and lights that we installed, it's, in, I guess, more uh, impressive this time of year. We have purchased new swags for downtown. We have new wreaths on the lights that are downtown, and we have additional lights on, on trees this year downtown. We've moved the Christmas tree that I hope you can see behind me into the center of Center Street. We've had it in downtown before. It'll grow as the trees around us grow, but our staff has worked hard to make our downtown area look festive, day or night, and I think they've succeeded in that. I would encourage everyone to come visit downtown and take a look for yourself. It really is a nice place to ride through in the evening and see the lights from end to end with the water tank lit up in the distance. Finally, I would wish everyone a safe and holiday, happy holiday season. Always remember there are plenty of those in need in our community. So help where you can uh, with your time and gifts, most importantly your time. I do wish you a very Merry Christmas as you have questions, comments, always our website, our office number, 580-4330, again 580-4330, or visit the website, there's a citizen request tab in the top left, that'll bring your comment right into the manager's office and we'll get it where we need it to, to get a response to you. Again, if we can be of service, please call.